So I'm going to start a new series today, uh, Daniel, Challenging Times and Courageous Faith. Uh, wow, Daniel found himself in a really unusual kind of season of his life, and it was a great challenge to his walk with God. And I think it's very appropriate for this moment. So for the next several weeks, uh, we're going to do that. In a moment, we're going to read out of Daniel chapter 1. If you want to get your Bibles, your devices ready. Uh, so some of the most well-known stories, especially if you're a graduate of Sunday school, any Sunday school graduates out there, I did the whole, the whole thing my whole life. Uh, some of the most famous stories of the Bible come out of the book of uh, Daniel. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fiery furnace, Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel's dreams and visions that he has toward the end of the book that are really kind of very appropriate for the time and the season that we are, uh, we are living in. So some of the most famous parts of the Bible come, come out of uh, Daniel. Now, uh, just so that you'll kind of get the context of this moment, the book of Daniel was written about 500 years before the time of Christ. Okay, so about 2,500 years ago, but about 500 years before the time of Christ. So just keep that, uh, just keep that in mind. Now we're going to do the scripture reading in just a moment, but I want to kind of talk for a moment about Daniel's life up to the moment we see the passage. So Daniel. He was living the dream, okay? He had it made in his life. I mean, he would have been a teenager, maybe 18, 19, 20, 21, something like that, young adult. It was just kind of that, that era in his life. And Daniel was a part of the royal family. So that means, man, he might not have been part of the lineage of David, but there were other, you know, uh, other royal lines there. And Daniel was part of the royal family. If you can think British, man, he had his, you know, probably living in a palace. Money was not an issue. He was living a life of wealth and privilege. You know, one of the finest educations that you could have. Money, not a problem. His future, you know, already taken care of. He's living in Jerusalem, which is a really nice city. I mean, uh, uh, so it's a big town. And listen, to be part of the royal family, he had, his, he had servants. I mean, can you imagine being 19 and you have your own servant? You know, you don't have to clean your room. You don't have to make your bed, which some of you, you don't do that anyway. But still, you had somebody that could take care of that. You had a cook. You had those that watched over you. I mean, Daniel has got this unbelievable life uh, in the royal family. But here's something about Daniel that I want you to remember, too. Daniel chose to serve God at a very comfortable time of his life, all right? Now, when, when life is easy, people can lose their focus on God. So that happens sometimes when money's there and there's no issues and there's no problems. Many times people drift in their faith and their focus kind of changes because life is easy. And Daniel chose as a young man, a very mature decision that even though, you know, my, my life is easy, I'm going to dive in and to lean in with my, you know, with my, my walk with God. Now, uh, some people, they don't like trouble in their life. They don't like trials in their life. But, you know, to some people, it's the only way God can ever get their attention when there's tribulation going on in their life. You know, that's the only time they ever look to the Lord. It's when, there's, when there are issues in their life. But Daniel, as a young adult, he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to serve God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for God. Some people only kind of look to the Lord in a season of trouble. Is that you? Is that you? When things are good, you kind of drift. You kind of lose your focus a little bit. And maybe things shake up a little bit and you turn to the Lord. Well, let me tell you, Daniel didn't, he didn't, he didn't look at his life that way. He was devoted to God in his younger years. He served God. So even when times were, were easy, Daniel served God. And when, when he was young, 
Daniel served God. Maybe 17, 18, 19, 20 young adults. And I just want to say that to you. Man, Daniel made a decision at a young age that he wasn't just going to kind of go through the motions, but he was going to dive in deep and he was going to know God personally. I want to challenge you with that today. So, so he's living this, this easy life as a royal. And I just want to remind you, be faithful in easy times because you never know what is around the corner. Be faithful in the good times. Be faithful. You know, I'm, I'm going to, whatever happens, man, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to serve God because you don't know what is around the corner. You don't know. Daniel didn't do that. I want to say to young people, make it a, make a determination now. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve for God, serve God now because you don't know what the next season of your life is. You don't know, because things can change quickly. Seasons can change rapidly. I mean, we're living in that now. Can you believe what we're living in? They've canceled schools. Everybody's online. Businesses have closed. Sports have shut down. Major parts of the economy are, 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 are closed. Disney said they're not even sure they're going to open until next year. I mean, can you believe the season that we're living in? Because things can change, uh, change can things, ra- things can change rapidly. So here's Daniel. Follow the story. So he's living this easy life. He's in the palace. He's got it made. He is living the dream. He goes to bed one night, and as he's asleep, he begins to hear like the watchmen on the wall. If you've been to Jerusalem, you know the walls of Jerusalem, and they had watchmen uh, all around that would, that would watch over the city, and they begin to hear the watchmen yell about invaders or armies or something, get to your, you know, to the armies of Israel inside. Hey, get to your, get to your stations. And man, all inside, there's all of this racket in the middle of the night, and Man, there's, there's yelling in the streets and running in the streets as soldiers, Israeli soldiers are, are going, going to, the, to the wall to defend against the, uh, against the invaders. And, and man, people are awake. What's going on? What, what is happening? They're looking out their, their windows that are inside that, that wall of Jerusalem. And man, all of a sudden, man, they hear the term Babylonians. The Babylonians are here. Man, that would be like if you and I, if, the, if we said the Russians we're, we're here in the United States. The Babylonians, are you kidding? One of the strongest armies anywhere is now on the inside of the walls. They've invaded, uh, they've invaded <coughs> Jerusalem. Wow, and all of a sudden, man, this, this season goes quickly. And man, there's fighting in the streets and there's, there's, there's bloodshed in the streets and there's yelling and there's screaming. All in one night as the Babylonians invade invade Jerusalem and then you start to hear the faint cries of the of the armies of Israel and you start to hear, see more and more Babylonian troops because they are being successful in this in this particular uh, in this particular battle they've even gone into the temple and they're taking the holy emblems from the temple these these invaders these Babylonians they begin to carry them out so if you've got Daniel chapter 1 let's just read Let's read this, what, what I just described to you. It says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of these articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia. And put the treasures in the house of his God. Keep reading. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, remember that name, chief of his court officials to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Man, this is the ultimate nightmare. Not only have the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem, and then there's bloodshed everywhere. There's a slaughter of the Israeli army. But they also come in the palace, the home of where Daniel lives, and they look around. 
and they capture him and they put shackles on him and they load him up on a caravan and they take him 1,600 miles away to Babylon. Man, his season changed quickly from a time that he's living the dream to the ultimate nightmare. Very, very quickly, he's taken from his home, from this religiously conservative city, to Babylon, which is, for, for you know, just uh, kind of like the Las Vegas of, of, uh, of, of that day. It was violent Babylon. Babylon that had its hands with bloodshed all over the world. It was sensual Babylon. It was morally corrupt Babylon. Wow, has that ever happened to you? You ever had a good season? Man, things were going well. And then, man, overnight you were living the dream and now the nightmare is there. I just want to remind you, even when that happens, God is still at work in your life. He hasn't forgotten you. I want to remind you of this passage. 1 Peter 4, it says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though some strange thing is happening to you. But rejoice in so much as that you might participate in the sufferings of Christ, that you might be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. Now look at the, the first sentence. It said, don't be surprised to the child of God. This is my common statement that I make when people are going, hey man, what's going on in my life? I said, hey, this is part of the deal. He said, don't be surprised when these things happen. It's part of the, the life of faith. And then he says, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal. So that means sometimes, man, the intensity of this thing is very strong. It's not just easy. Sometimes it comes out of nowhere and it's very intense. When we start going through trials, C.S. Lewis if you are a C.S. Lewis person, I love this quote. He said, we were promised sufferings. They were part of the program. We were even told, and he quotes Christ, blessed are they that mourn. And then he says, I accept it. I've got nothing I haven't bargained for. I'm just telling you, trial and tribulation for the child of God is just part of the deal, all right? So if you're going through suffering, if you're going through illness, if you're going through unemployment, if you're going through poverty, if you're going through discouragement, if you're going through persecution or rejection, I want you to know this morning, these are not signs that God has forsaken you. God is going to use these in your life. God is trying to use these things to perfect your heart. See, when we're saved, there is a call, there is a destiny, there is a plan a surrounding you that you don't even know. And I want you to know nothing has changed about that. What is happening to you now is not the end. God is trying to teach you something now that you will need later. It's not the end. God is teaching you something. Let me tell you something. He's already, he's already put some things down in your heart. So for Daniel, even though he left Jerusalem, he took some things that God had already birthed in his heart with him. He left all of his stuff behind in Jerusalem. But there were some things that God had already built in his heart that were going to serve him in this next season. Let's take a look at Daniel's new location and his new identity. So Ashpenaz... He gathers all of these young Jewish men, okay? And the first thing, and you'll see in verse 4, here's what he was to do. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. You see, we see it uh, with young adults today as they're trying to, to influence our, our young adults. Look, they use academics and they use culture. They use academics and they use culture. Now, to Ashpenaz, he was using literature, a language and literature. But their language and literature is our movies, music, social media, and academics. Okay, that's, that's kind of the, 
you know, they, they, they use academics to kind of reframe the mind. They use culture to kind of reframe my mind. Can I just remind every parent out there this morning that there are people like Ashpenaz that, that want your kids thinking and living differently than you have taught them and what the Scripture has taught them, okay? And we've got to figure out a plan as parents when our, when our culture runs the opposite of our beliefs that we've taught our children and the way we live our lives because they're modern day people who want to reframe. They want to retrain, which is why they took them to Babylon, took these guys to Babylon to teach them the language, to teach them the literature, the scripture says, of the Babylonians. I want to tell you there are people that want to teach your kids differently when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to religious beliefs. They are, they are in Babylon where they're, uh, the, the teaching was many gods with that sexuality was woven in to worship. The Babylonians were violent, you know, and and there are people today that want to that want to to retrain our kids' minds, but it's also with this godlessness and secularism in as well. Academics and culture, you can change the values of a young person if you're not careful, and we see that today. Andrew Fletcher. He said, let me make the songs of a nation. I care not who makes its laws. He understood the value of culture and the influence of culture. He said, let me write the songs and I'll reshape. I can reshape anything with with that influence. So parents, I want to say to you this morning, we need to be on on guard as as people are trying trying to reshape and rethink the way that our kids the way we're trying to raise our kids. Look at verse 5. The king assigned them to a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. And then they renamed them, okay? So you, you know these names. To Daniel, they gave the name of Belteshazzar. They're giving, they're giving Babylonian names, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. All right, They changed their names, not just to give new names, but to give new identities. Okay, Trying to re- totally remake these young men into the mind and the culture. It, we started with language and literature, okay? The influence of academics and culture on reframing the heart of a young adult. And now they're changing the identity. They're giving them, they're giving them new, new, new names and establishing new identities here in Babylon. So your identity, your identity, that is who you are. Your identity is rooted basically in your family. Because when you're born, you get a last name. That's a big deal when they take a last name and they place it on a child that gives identity. But even with that last name, they give you a home, a place where you live. They give you a family and family relationships of parents and siblings. They give you morals and teach you right from wrong. They give you spiritual values. That's part of your identity. They give you a heritage. You have a family history. And now that name is upon you for you to carry forth that that name. They, They help you propel you into your future. Your identity is who you are and what you believe. That's your your identity. And the world tries to remake this identity today. This world tries to remake our identity. From time to time, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but when the police pull you over, has that ever happened? If you need prayer, you can just say, hey, that's me, and you can put it in the comment section. But what do they want to see? When they pull you over, what's the first thing? They want to see your identity, I mean your, your ID. They want to see your, your driver's license that tells them your first and last name and where you live. And I want to tell you, we live in a crazy world that's trying to remake the identities of believers. They start with literature. They start with language. They're trying to remake 
remake us into this secular kind of uh, uh, identity, but there are times that you just have to remind people of your identity. And I just want to say to you, as, as parents and as believers, as the cultural headwinds come against us, and it, is, it becomes increasingly difficult to stand for Christ, there are times that you've just got to remind yourself and the world of your identity. Can I remind you? Can I give you your spiritual ID this morning? My spiritual identity is rooted in my heavenly father and the work that Jesus did for me on the cross I am a follower of Jesus I joyfully serve him and I will give my life my my life here in my service to my Lord and nothing changes about that people are always trying to change our identity change who we are trying to change you know what we believe but we're not we're not going we're not going to we're not going to do that we're not going to do that we're going to stand for Christ and you see Daniel doing that, this young man, this young man, he makes this stand. Look at verse 8. Okay, so they they take him to Babylon. They're teaching him literature and language, academics and culture, trying to reshape his mind. They They give him this food. They set this food of Babylon down in front of him for him, for him to eat. Look at verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food or wine and asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Wow. Wow. That's, that's some strength from a young man. Can I just remind you, you know, in easy times... You need to be leaning in on God because you won't always be in easy times. There's going to be some things that God's going to teach you and birth you that you're going to need in another season. And we see that fruit coming about in Daniel's life right now. He was pressured pressured to give up his Jewish identity for Babylonian identity. Now he's pressured to violate the food laws, okay, of the way that he was raised. Now let me just say, let's talk about temptation for just a second. Let's talk about it. It always starts with something easy. Something seemingly innocent. The road to compromise when it comes to temptation always starts with something easy. It starts with something small. It's just a little food. It's no big deal. It's not a problem. Just eat it. You can fight another battle another day. But he chose not to, he chose not to do that. Because I want to tell you, when you start making small compromises along the way, it becomes easier when it's time to make the big compromises. So he sat there. It's just a little food and a little wine, but he resolved himself not to be defiled. Can I just say this to you as well, something else about temptation? It always starts something small. And then, like with him, sometimes it's done privately. See, nobody would have really known Nobody from Jerusalem would have ever really known what Daniel had done. He was kind of by himself. Maybe a few people would have known, but he, nobody knows. Nobody sees. That's the the two things of temptation that we have to watch. It can be a small thing sometimes, and then, hey, nobody's watching. Nobody's, Nobody's seeing. But I want to tell you something. Daniel didn't go down that path. He said he resolved himself not to defile himself. We live in a world with no absolutes and moral relativism everywhere. And there's a, everybody's got to ask this question so at some point. What, 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 are, what are your spiritual values? What are your spiritual values? What are going to be the rules of God's word that are going to guide and define your life? And you need to, if you don't know what they are, you need to decide them and write them out. And they need to serve as a guide for you. Because Daniel, 1,600 miles away, in a very difficult environment, a very young, impressionable man, but he stood for God. He had certain values of his life that were non-negotiable in his service to God. You need to decide them if you don't know what they are. But then you need to live them out. Whether it's a time of ease because it's easy to live your spiritual values in the, pa- in the palace when you're living the dream. But man, when you're over in Babylon and they're asking for small compromises and it's kind of, it's kind of, you're kind of anonymous, man, it's difficult sometimes. But he had these core values in his heart. And I just want to say to every young person, every college student today, you need to write down what your spiritual values are and they are the laws that guide your life and they are non-negotiable when it comes to the way you serve God. 
Establish your time with God. Establish your devotional time. Make that a part of your everyday life. Determine that you're going to live pure. I don't care what other people are doing. I don't care how other people are living. I'm going to live my life with my body. I'm going to live my life in a way that is pure before God. Watch what goes in your heart and in your mind. There are other spiritual values in your life, and they'll, they'll guide you. They'll guide you as well. Brent, worship team, you guys can come. His character had been developed in a previous season. Okay, and he's living it out now. His character, his his uh, his values had already been established. Nineteen, twenty years old. You know that prayer and fasting would be part of his life. Intimacy with God would be part of his life. You see the fruit of all of this coming about with the wisdom that he has. In a very small future, we'll see, man, he's having visions and dreams. God's speaking to him in a powerful way. This is a young man whom God did something in a time of ease, but he's using now in a challenging time. I want to say Psalms. There's a couple of Psalms here that I, that I love. It says, my heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. My heart is set on keeping your decrees. David said, here's your laws. Man, and I'm going to follow them to the very end. Your spiritual values, what are they? He said, my heart is set. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. And then he says, my eyes are fixed on you, O sovereign Lord. My heart is set on your values. My eyes are fixed on you. I'm watching you. I'm listening. I'm I'm looking to heaven, but I'm living my life. By the values of God's word. Okay? With every opportunity you have to turn to God, there'll be an attempt, there'll be a temptation to draw you away from God. With every opportunity you have to turn to God. So when the temptation is there and you choose God, there's a strength that comes from that. But there's also be a temptation to draw you away from God, too. Okay? So when you start giving in to temptation, there's this, there's this weakness and decay and separation that can occur. Every temptation is there. And if you make the right choice, man, it turns you to God. But with every temptation, it can draw you away from God as well. So can I just say this morning, it's, this is not some type of you know, game. This is intense spiritual warfare that is happening where God wants to, I mean, excuse me, where the, where the enemy wants to stop what God is doing in your life. Especially if you're young, he wants to stop it at a young age before you can make any impact and have any influence on the kingdom of God. He's trying to stop you now while you're young. Literature, culture, new identity, new identity. Hey, this morning I want to, I just want to pray as we close here this morning. I want to pray for those who've been listening this morning. Maybe you are in a rapid change of season, not just with what's going on in our world, but man, you've gone from man, you've gone from the the, the palace living the dream to living a nightmare in your life. I want to tell you, you're going to make it. Lean into God. Trust what God has been working in your life in the previous season, okay? I want to say to students and young adults, okay, this is a season where you need to be very serious about your walk with God. I know sometimes we're thinking, hey, I'll just do it a little later. Let me get married. Let me get out of college. I'm really going to drill down then, and probably it won't happen, okay? Because sometimes if we're living a compromised life in, in, in these years, we will never buckle down in later years. It only kind of gets worse, the older that we get. So I'm calling you, I'm calling our teenagers and our young adults to purity and to love God and to lean into the Lord and to make your relationship with God now when times may be a little easier for you to make it a priority because God's going to build something in you that He's going to use down the road. I want to pray for those men who just feel weak. They just need some courage to stand. Daniel resolved himself. I'm not doing it. I'm just not going to do it. And there's some of you, you're faced with all kinds of issues and and temptations. And I'm just going to pray for strength and courage that you're going to have the resolve, just like Daniel. You're going to have the same resolve. And you're going to have the same courage to live for God. I'm going to pray those in just a moment. But 
hey, if you're, if you're with us today, I don't know the spiritual background of every person that is, uh, that is watching. Maybe, you know, maybe you've kind of drifted. Maybe you've kind of lost your focus. Maybe you had an easy season in your life and it kind of took you away from the Lord. I want to tell you this is the moment that you can come back. Doesn't matter what you've done. Maybe in that season where you kind of drifted, maybe there were some bad things that happened in your life. I just want to tell you it doesn't matter this morning. God is a God of mercy and grace and salvation. And today can be your day that you step back in and say, Lord, I, I, want, to, I want to ask forgiveness of sins. And God, I want you to do something powerful in my life. Today can be that day. So I just want to start with that prayer of people that want to come to faith in Jesus this morning. Then I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray those other things, and they're going to just lead you in a time of worship this morning. So I just want to pray this prayer. And this is you, if you're away from the Lord, maybe you've never committed your life to the Lord, I want to give you that opportunity today. It says, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, it's that simple. It's that simple. And man, if that's you, man, send us an email, info at gctlh.org. Put in the comments section, hey, just prayed the prayer. Our moderators will be in touch with you. We want to know, man, if you're recommitting, rededicating your life. I want to follow up with you and say hello to you. So let me pray for those other things this morning. So Lord, I pray today. I pray for those who are kind of walking through a really difficult season. Overnight, things changed on them. They went from a living the dream to a nightmare. I pray over them today. But I pray, God, the things that you have built for them in them in the previous season are going to sustain them right now. I pray you were, you were not shocked or surprised. And you tell us not to be shocked and surprised for this, for this change. But Lord, you're going to birth a fruit in us Lord, you're going to do something in our heart through this season. So, Lord, I pray. I pray as some are in a nightmare season right now. God, I pray your sustaining hand over their life. I pray they're going to have strength. They're going to make it through this. I pray for every student. I pray for every young adult today. Lord, I pray that there will just be a, a seriousness about their walk with God. Lord, Daniel dove deep into his walk with the Lord and, Lord, it served him well. And I pray for every teenager. I pray for every college-age student and young adult. I pray, God, I pray for this foundation of God's Word to be in their heart. Lord, this determination that they're going to serve you. They're not going to wait until later to kind of turn it on. But, Lord, they're going to give everything that they've got to you right now and let you do a powerful work in their heart right now. And I want to pray with parents. Parents, if you'll just pray with me. Lord, I pray with these parents here. I pray with our parents today and grandparents. Lord, I pray, God, that you would do something wonderful in the hearts of our children. God, I pray, Lord, the seed of God's word, Lord, would, 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 would give fruit in their life. I pray with parents and grandparents, Lord, a, a spiritual heritage, Lord, is, is, is being built into our, our family that, that will last generations. Lord, I pray over them today. Lord, I pray for those, Lord, that maybe they feel a little compromised. Lord, they need some courage. Lord, I pray for those who, whose faith, Lord, gets put on in the spotlight sometimes and they just feel like they fail. God, I pray that we'll learn from this young man. Daniel resolved himself not to defile, uh, not to defile himself. He resolved not to defile himself. I pray. But that same resolve, that same strength in our life and courage that we're going to live for God. That we're going to live for God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the pastor at Generations Church. Thank you for watching our service. If you're a guest, please fill out the contact information at gctlh.org forward slash connect. Please know it's our desire to provide ministry to every age starting at GC Kids Junior, our nursery program, all the way through our senior adults that we call teenagers. We also have many ways that you can be involved at Generations Church, one of which is our small groups that we call connect groups, or you can find your place of ministry in one of our serve teams. 
Please know that we appreciate you watching and we hope to see you in one of our services very soon. If you have any questions about our church or want to respond in any way to the service, please feel free to message us at info at gctlh.org. God bless you and thank you for watching.